Hello everyone, my name is Stacey K. Roach and I'm here with you guys today for a new episode of the Rebrand and Rebuilding Community. I'm here with you guys today with a special guest that came on the show to speak to us today about rebrand and rebuilding, transitioning his life. I'll give him a chance to introduce himself. We'll jump right in. Okay. Hi Stacey, my name is Lee Hopkins and I'm a coach for the Patterns of Possibility. I help people create friendships. And so I started doing this because I had my own transition throughout life. And I don't mean just the transition from one thing to another, but I also mean that I'm a transgender person from female to male. So I help people make genuine friendships. And I thought that creating that transition for me would be the ultimate change and have my life change forever in a way that would connect me to other people. But I found that it doesn't, it didn't. And so I want to share my story. Okay, great, great. I love that. Um, I love that you say, you know, you are, you're, you are a transgender, you're transitioning in your, for yourself. So what is mm-hmm. that all about? For people that don't know what trans is, like the whole transitioning. And, you know, I ask people out there that, you know, want to do the same thing, but they're afraid or they, you know, they're ashamed or like, I mean, I that's two questions in one. So can you mm-hmm. tell us what it is exactly? And then can you tell us, you know, how did you come about it? Like, you know? Okay. Well, a quick backstory. You know, I grew up in a small town. I'm not going to tell you the whole story. I promise it's just going to be short. <laughs> but uh, I grew up in a small town and I wasn't really comfortable with who I was and how I fit in in that place. And I transitioned from one place to the next. And I keep using that word transition because it really does mean change. It's different from one position to the next. So I'm moving and I keep finding myself in situations where I'm afraid to be exactly who I am. And then I get to a point where I think I figured it out. This is where I want to be. This is where I want to step into my my body and say that I'm a transgender person. So I was born female and I'm almost 40 now. So I spent most of my life, 30 something years as a female presenting. And I find the, the right people who can give me an idea of what I really feel inside. I think this was a time where Caitlyn Jenner was starting to uh, explain herself and the transition for her. So I started to get the information and everything that I needed. And I thought, well, this feels right. I had no idea what it felt like before, but this feels right. I understand this. And I've been searching for 30 something years. And so when I transition, I say I transition physically because not other, not everyone does it physically and medically. But I changed my pronouns from she to he. And I got all the paperwork done. I've got um, the medicine that I needed, the the surgery that I needed, all those things I was able to do. And so that's what I, that's what transitioning looks like for me and may not look like that for other people. And so uh, the next question that you asked was about finding who that person was or finding out how that was, uh, I think, I thought it was gonna change my life. I mean, it did, obviously. I feel happy with where I am, how I sound, what I look like, I feel, ecstatic about those things but as far as it making me a whole new person inside it didn't do that mm-hmm. it didn't do that no so i like that you said that so even d- though you did transition from she to he um you got the paperwork doctors everything and everything is great your doctor did a wonderful job yeah <laughs> god bless <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so even though you did that, like you said, you still wasn't happy. You, it was still a piece of something. It was still just something that was missing. And like you said, building friendships. So how do you come about, you know, figuring out, you know, well, okay, maybe it's people that I'm missing or, you know, relationships, that bond, that. So how did you, how did you figure that out? How did you get to that point? How did you transition from, okay, I've done all the proper procedures and transition mentally, physically, emotionally. So Mm -hmm. now you are basically transitioning spiritually and you're opening yourself up to new ways of life, new perceptions and new perspectives. Because when you you have people involved, everybody has an opinion. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> so how did you get to that point? How did you transition from from that transition to you know the original to you know getting to where okay it's something else? It's yeah, well, it, it's funny because the reason why you know I thought that well, I mean, I've always been. I've always been told, and I'm sure people have heard this all over, that you can't love your, you can't love anyone until you love yourself, right? <laughs> and yeah, and so I've heard that before, but I didn't, I didn't understand what it really meant. So yeah, back when I was in my own small town, I would just move from place to place to place, looking for the right group of people. I'm thinking that there's nothing with me; it's everybody else and their vibe. Right. So most of my life, I was thinking I'm around the wrong people. I need to get to the right people. I'm around the wrong people to get to the right people. So I moved from Ohio to California and, uh, you know, many places within those states. And then finally to Chicago, where I am now. But I moved around hoping, searching for those people, not realizing that you said that, you know, I didn't realize that there needed to be a spiritual change. It was all mental, physically and emotionally. I'm I'm going through those changes, moving from place to place to place, meeting groups of people from people to people. But I keep, I kept recognizing that I kept doing the same pattern, Mm -hmm. executing the same pattern, whatever it was, like um, not being open and exposing myself to people oh that sounds terrible <laughs> but, no, no, that, that's pure, that's honesty. like you said, you wasn't opening yourself up to even yeah. other people you thought it was the people so could you yeah story go ahead i'm, I'm listening because i'm all ears <laughs> <laughs> but i mean i i thought that i was i was uh, I, it was me it was me that wasn't opening up to other people <laughs> I thought that I was being a great person. I thought that I was being helpful. I thought that I was being uh, one person who was there for you. Like I was the kind of person who would show up for you if you needed me to help you move. I would show up for big things like that. Like I, I can do these little things, but you know, people really didn't know about me, about who I was. I wasn't talking about my history. I wasn't talking about my failures. I wasn't talking about my first. I wasn't talking about anything really. I was just there sitting in conversation kind of listening wondering why people aren't talking to me like yeah, have you i ever felt like you are like you said you're in the room you're present physically but mentally you're not there it's like you're yeah. watching yourself outside of yourself watching you like like why am i here what is like and like you said there's something bigger going on in, in the midst of that so you had to you understood that okay so maybe it's not the people maybe it's me and i love your story because you know i'm i'm not transitioning um the way you are but my transition was mostly rebranding myself after being torn and scorned and you know my reputation being tarnished and mm-hmm. some, some of my doing everyone didn't do that i i put some of that those bad marks on there too and yeah uh, <laughs> and as well as other people so I had to, I transitioned and I was, and I'm in the process still of rebuilding myself. I, just, I really just felt like, you know what, I'm not being myself. Like, um, like you said, I'm, I'm moving around from people to people, the person to person, the relationship to relationship. And I haven't been in many relationships, relationships. I've only been in two relationships. But I had this thing where I would meet someone and then as soon as it starts to get deep, I would run away. I would, I would, oh. I would, I would cut ties with the person, friendship-wise, whether it was a relationship, whether it was a, um, you know, just amicable, like if it was just, uh, you know, associates. Like I, it was when stuff got too deep because I had a problem with, uh, you know, with abandonment. Like I lost my grandmother at an early, early age, and then I uh, actually watched a man fall down in front of me and, you know, hit his head, die from a seizure. So I watched Yikes. death. And as a, as a young kid, seeing that I was afraid to get close to people, and I I, mm-hmm. I, I try to be a people pleaser while I'm doing everything people wanted me to do, talking yeah. the way they want me to talk. You know, mm-hmm. I, I was just like you said, I thought I was being there and being a nice person, and really in, in reality, I wasn't. I really wasn't opening myself up. Like um, and even now, like I said, with the rebrand and rebuilding myself, um, after the divorce and going through homelessness and just going through disaster after disaster. Like, I still wasn't open. It was still some part of me that had to realize, like, okay, you know, 
maybe it's not everybody else. Maybe it is me too. <laughs> we have to own up and accept accountability. I'm not saying yeah. they didn't do me wrong, but I did me wrong before they could. I taught them how to treat me. And when I didn't respect myself and I didn't, you know, just see my power that I, that I wield within and just, you know, know my worth, I, I, was, I was missing out. I was exactly. Lasting friendships, relationships, and I'm new to the whole relationship building thing. Like I'm not good, you know. I, I guess I'm not good. I'm good. I'm gonna take that back. I don't want to put that out there to the universe. But yeah. at the time, I wasn't good where I felt like you know I could build a relationship. And now I'm I'm on a path of healing old childhood wounds and 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 opening myself up more and letting people really get to see who I am because I've always hid that. Once you start to see too much and know too much about me, I'm like, uh-uh, fuck Got that. Mm -hmm. like, yep. I was away. Uh, like, I was really bad. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, so you, you out here running away because you showing, you showing yourself and who you are. Like, you, you're getting comfortable. People are getting comfortable yeah, with you. And I'm over here running away <laughs> because I'm like, I don't think anybody knows me. I got to get out of here. I got to go. We got to find people. We but I don't, I don't show we up when I go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> so, okay. So, once you, okay, once you realize and accept that, you know what? Okay, some things that you had to transition as well. Like, you know, opening yourself up and putting yourself out there. Like, yeah. you know, now you are where you are now. You are a coach. You are guiding other people. So how did you transitioning from, okay, I, I know what I need to do. I'm going to work on myself and get there. And then now I'm to the point where I can help other people. So how did you from, from there to there? Like, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, because when I went through this whole expensive, a draining medical, uh, this process, this process is physically draining, emotionally, mentally, you know, all of that. I changed my entire, now. yeah, it was, a, it was, it was a thing. It was, yeah. I mean, I put all this energy into it and the belief was is that once I do this, once I do this, my life is gonna be different. I'm gonna be open, people are gonna accept me for who I am, and I'm gonna I'm gonna no, none of that stuff happened. None of that stuff happened. This is the thing. This was the wake up call. This was one of the things. I even had a girlfriend at the time when I was transitioning. And I'm like, Yeah, this is it. This is my life. Everything's gonna change. And as soon as I went through this, it didn't feel different nothing opened up for me the world didn't open up nothing changed in the way that i thought it would i wasn't able to automatically talk to people and meet people no actually my girlfriend and i we are fighting we broke up whoa okay that sucked and then the next thing you know i'm just not able to talk to anybody i'm back out there in the dating pool and now not only do i have nothing to really talk about like i won't really share much about myself but now i'm self-conscious about my body and who i am now i'm like i have another level of Ugh, trauma. <laughs> that was another level of that stuff. So, so I had to work through that. So it to start the rebranding. So I thought I rebranded myself by just becoming a whole new human being physically. But spiritually, spiritually, I have to go through this process where I have to deal with being rejected. I'm going to be rejected. Everyone's going to be rejected. It's going to feel this pain and it's what you do with it. So I realized that looking back on what I was doing, my past patterns of behavior was to run away. We track stars. We run. We run away as soon as I felt like I was rejected. As soon as I felt like, well, these people don't like me. They're the wrong group. They're the wrong group. And just kept doing it over and over yep, and over yep. again. It was a cycle. Yeah. Ooh, and it... it it occurred to me that it wasn't working. It just wasn't working no matter where I went. So I left the entire state, Ohio, moved to California, then moved to Chicago, moved a bit around in Chicago. There's so many people in Chicago, second largest city, I think maybe third now, but it's a large city. There are so many people to run into, to, to talk to. And I'm like, if I can't make a friend here, then there's something wrong. Well, I there's something wrong. Chicago. So yeah, Chicago is, you know, it's a lovely city. I actually got to drive through the city and just see the, the buildings and the landscaping, the architecture, like it was, uh, Chicago, I'm gonna have to really go back and do something in Chicago, like. <laughs> yeah, come back, come back, through. eat some I pizza. To, I went to sightsee, but I, I did love Chicago while I was there. <laughs> <laughs> but see, there's so much, There's uh, to your point, there is so much to do and there's so much to see. And there's so many people to connect to here. Yeah. So if I couldn't find, if I couldn't find my place in the world, it must mean that I haven't looked somewhere and that somewhere was within. Yeah. So 
I started to understand these patterns of behavior that I had, like, okay, I'm running, all right? And then what am I running from? I'm running from this rejection that I think that I feel. And then I'm running from real rejection. I'll never forget. I love comedy. I love comedy. There's so much to do here. And this was back in, I think, 2009 or, or, or not nine, but 18 or something like that. But I went out to uh, stand up. I used to just go out to these random stand up places and I figured, I'm going to start telling people about who I am. I'm going to start telling the people that I'm trans. I sat down that we were having a drink with this guy, random guy. Um, we were just chatting and I wanted to share a little bit about me. And I think I went too far too fast because I told him I was trans and his eyes bugged out. I swear to you, he got up. He didn't say a word. and He just left. He was just like gone. He left the whole venue. And I was like, wow, that hurt. That hurt. You know but, what? You might have triggered something within him, though. Exactly. You know? Exactly. You know, it's not about me. That's where it comes. This is where I figure like, okay, well, but still it hurt me. But it's there's two people here. It's not just about me. Right. And so I can take that and say, you know what? He did us both a favor. He he went and he had to deal with whatever he needed to. But also, I know, you know. That might have something in him for him to be honest. He probably had yeah. to get off his chest right then and there. He left the whole venue. So you never <laughs> know how it goes. But so I love that you, like you said, you you didn't let it hurt you. You didn't take that. Oh, okay, okay. Well, you know, well, he rejected me. Oh, well, like you said, you don't really know what he had going on. And you was happy. Right. He, he said he probably did both of you guys a favor. So it takes that. Yeah, like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it takes that understanding. It takes that understanding. This is where I, where I help and I coach people about it. It takes that understanding to know that it, everything is not about you. Only thing in the world is about you is you, you know, exactly. discovering who you are and discovering what you want in your life. But everything that everybody else does is not about you. It's about them. And so you know, that's how I help coach people with that. I love that. I love your the process of transitioning. You really helped me break down you know step by step it's, it's a process and it doesn't happen overnight um each day you you knock something out of there like you said you took the time to first go within to see okay you know what's the issue like you know <laughs> i'm the you know i'm the reason for why i feel the way i feel i'm the reason why i am where i am mm-hmm. and like you said you open yourself up to you know having building lasting relationships and friendships and that's the beautiful thing and that's where i'm getting to now you actually you was this interview is right on time for everything that's going on in my life i don't really want to spill the tea but um <laughs> I have a lot of i'm in the process of building lasting relationships and friendships and i needed this conversation that's why you see i'm going into full detail i'm, I'm here with the questions today mm-hmm. right? <laughs> because, um, like, you know, it's not only for me but people out there that are experiencing the same things that you did and even though they're going through the same things you guys are going to go through it in different ways you're going to say you're, mm-hmm. you are you and they are them and they're going to walk their path and so did you but i feel like you sharing your story here today opens up a lot of people to be able to do that for themselves and even if it's getting out of a a abusive relationship you know or getting out of something a toxic career or job and like this exactly transitioning is like you said moving from step to step i mean it's a change you're you're you're, it's a process so being able to to really really transition that's scary because you're giving yeah. away everything you used to know for everything you want now and you don't know how it's going to turn out and it's, it's scary it's a scary process um, yeah and if, if i could leave your audience with something if i can leave your audience with something that might help with that you know what i discovered on my journey was these three things that the three ends i call them needs your negotiables and your never so when you look back on your past insecurities and your your fears or your triumphs or whatever you're going to look and you're going to see that there are these three things that exist that your needs your negotiables and your nevers your needs those are things that you absolutely need to see to happen when you move into this new space or when you connect with this new person you need to see them be a person of their word you need to see that you're negotiable these are things that you might not be thrilled with but you're not gonna throw you're not gonna throw the relationship away because you know they did something that was upsetting to you you're just gonna tell them about it you're just gonna make sure you tell them how you feel about it and that's it i love that i love that yeah and then your nevers your nevers are things that you just cannot have people doing 
you know, people cheat on you, and you say that you can't be with a person who's cheating on you, but if they cheat on you and you take them back, then okay, what do you, what do you really want? Then what do you really want? What are your, because a lot of people try to push their, their nevers and their needs into the negotiable bucket. And they feel like, well, they can put up with this. They'll deal with it. They don't care. They'll, they'll be okay. They hope that the person changes. But after the umpteenth time you see them do this, then when is it going to be a never? When are you tired of fighting and arguing with this person? What is it about this that you're afraid to leave? So that's, that's where we start looking. But you should know what it makes it easier for you. It just makes it a lot easier for me. When I know what my needs are, when I need from a person, when I'm willing to negotiate, and that's a big area. Well, not big deal, but there's some nevers and things that people just cannot do and not going to fly. And you got to be willing to walk away when you don't get those things. That's the thing. You've got to be willing to walk away from the things. You, you, you say you want to give this to the audience. You just gave that. You just gave me something to take. With you. <laughs> like, seriously, your, your you said your needs, your negotiables and your nevers. And I'm mm-hmm. the type of person who said I did blur my needs and my negotiables. And well, and I say my needs in my, with my nevers. Like I, mm-hmm. I would have where I, I wouldn't. I said I would never put up with this, but I'm putting up with this because I love you. So now it's became negotiable, and now we're at a point where it's all right, cool. Where I felt like, well, I guess I need you to be yourself. I'm allowing you to be you, so I could be with you, and we could be in love. And it was really not love, and like mm-hmm. it was not putting up mm-hmm. with that. Like, yeah. <laughs> Because at the end of the day, you find out that if you try to, you try to, to, to push on those needs or those negotiable or those nevers, you try to push them away, but they're going to come back. It's like pushing a beach ball underwater, trying to pull it down. That's going to come out. You're going to get tired of holding that stuff back and boom. There you go. Going on. Yeah, you're going to explode. I and mean, that's when you have those crazy outlashes and, and you know. Oh, you know, yeah. I've like been there. Oh, man. Because I've been there. And, I've you know, yes. when you saying that, that just, you know, kind of triggered me a little bit and let me, and helped me realize, like, okay, I really, especially with these relationships and friendships that I'm building now, I want them to last because the people that I'm, I'm finding myself surrounded by, I kind of love their energy. And that's great I, I don't yeah want to give all my power away where because you're a great person i'm letting you walk all over me i'm that type of person because i admire mm-hmm. you so much because you know and i hate to say i put people on pedestal especially in relationships when i'm dating i will put the man like this especially when you check off all the boxes for me <laughs> and you know <laughs> so I, yeah. I really put you on a pedestal where i'm lowering myself to raise you up and then anything you do is an issue for me because I'm, I got you so high I got you you know I don't believe my perfect guy would mm-hmm. do that he wouldn't act out and I have been having to realize too that perfect people fuck up and every and nobody's really perfect just to be yeah. the best of them they fuck up they make mistakes but you'll know yeah and all that know. energy and all that you know the way you see them they're like whoa whoa wait I didn't I don't want to <laughs> They, it's, it's, it's kind of like you know you change the position you change the role on them yeah. they're like well we we're even we're equal we're cool you know we walk hand in hand side to side and all of a sudden you walk in on your knees next to them and they're like what are you doing what are you doing I, I didn't want you to do this you hold me to the standard that's just too hard for me to reach and i can't be this person for you and it makes it uncomfortable for me i know you're trying to to be cool with me i know you're trying to to be connected with me and keep me but that that's scary oh that's scary i used to do that i mean i i mean i'm gonna still say that i i have like because it was just this idea of oh you like me i can't let you get away i gotta do everything i need to do to keep you near me and i know that that just hurts the relationship because they can't be themselves and you can't be yourself because you're like i want to cuss you out but I love you, and I don't want you to go away. <laughs> right? You know, like you said, even when they when they mess up, you have to be able to. If you are around someone and you hold them accountable, and they don't like it, that's a first yeah, red flag. That's sign that that boom. There you go. Not right? I can't. Yeah, I, I can't mm-hmm. say exactly what because everybody's different. But that is a clear indicator that okay, if this person don't like to be to, like don't like to stand corrected or don't like to be corrected, it is an issue because we all can stand to be corrected. I mess up, and I want someone that's gonna hold me accountable. I want people around me that's gonna say, "Hey, Stacy, get your shit together," and not exactly and not don't allow me to walk all over you because my personality is very. Mm. 
It's, I have a strong <laughs> persona. And some people, when I meet them automatically, they don't like me and they say it's because I come off really... What's, I'm not gonna say, oh, I'm not gonna, it's not egotistic, and it's just, I just come off, I come off mm. a little strong, I just know what I want, and I and now that I'm, I'm setting my boundaries, I'm like, okay, boom, I'm putting that up first. So I've been having that to just like, scares okay, people. a little bit, just, mm-hmm. you know, I'm trying to like, just work into the relationships or the friendships, and uh, like, uh, it's a flow, like, I'm just, I'm going with the flow and not trying to force it, you know? Y- like, yeah. That kind of attitude, that kind of, that kind of, like, the boldness to be yourself, how dare you? How dare you? <laughs> like, that scares people. But, it really I mean, does. You know, and it, it's not your fault. It's all them. It's, Thank you. for the most part. They mm. haven't got there yet, but that's what I wanted. And you know what? I'm glad you spoke about, you know, showing and teaching people, you know, how to navigate through these relationships and through these feelings and how, because with my coaching, I kind of just want to, help you be you like you know yeah that's it like i can't teach you how to you know do anything else but i can i can pull that out of you because i know how to do it i've been doing it for so long so many years just i had to dial Mm. it back because i grew up in a a, a big family and a lot of my sisters a lot of my the friends of the family they didn't really like it so i kind of toned down a whole lot where i was just forgetting my power and forgetting Mm. my worth so now that I'm out there again and I'm putting it out there, I'm like, I'm not going to let you stop me from being me. But at the same time, I'm not going to keep you from being you. And if me being so much of me, like I'll dial it back to a certain extent, but not to the point where I'm not, I can't be who I am. Like I said, right. I kind of come off a little demanding and, you know, I like I'm in control of everything. I don't try to be that way, but I'm, I'm a natural born leader. So when I see something needs to be laid, I'm going to lead it. I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> you gotta steal this shit. like, you're not about to steer me, you're not going to be going over, overboard, like, I need to make sure we're going in a, a proper, a, 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 the right direction, so I'm that person to stand up and take lead, some people don't like that, and then I just know how to, like I said, I'm still myself, but not where I'm, I ain't going to say too much for them, but I'm not, ru- I'm not rubbing off on them, where I'm not rubbing them in the wrong way, I'm allowing them to still be who they are. Like you should still yeah. do, let me be me. We come together and we do this thing. And we be we. I love. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, because at the end of the day, I mean, at the end of the day, I really think that we all just want to be understood. And if you got space to hear somebody and understand how they feel, they still gonna be, you know, connected with you. You ain't gotta change for them. You don't have to agree with what they say either. You just have to understand and demonstrate that you understand what they they're talking about, so they can feel like oh, they're a part of it, or they're heard, or they're seen. I know if you shine so bright, because you have a light and a power that's in you you know you said you're a natural born leader and you just go ahead and you lead well you know you shine so bright you got no room for anybody else people aren't going to want to stay there but if you got room for people if you got people that let people shine you help them shine or you show them a little bit about who they are they're going to want to be there all day they don't care how that's bright you shine because it don't bother them do. and that's what i'm learning how to do Yes, you know what? Mm-hmm. You said it better than I could. You you put it out there and explained it. I couldn't. I didn't have the words for it because I'm just learning it. But now that I have, <laughs> I have the tools and the knowledge, that's all I want to teach. That's all I want to know. I want to know. I'm I'm a I'm a learner of life, and that is why I'm in the whole coaching game. Like that's where I come in. At. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, I can definitely tell. I can definitely tell. <laughs> <laughs> Like on our meet and greet, we kind of chopped it up. We our energy match, we vibed, and even today, like we kind of ran into some hiccups. Sorry, it was on my, you know, my part. No, but I really want to meet you, like in person. And I haven't. I've, oh yeah. This is like what my fifteenth, sixteenth interview, and you're the first one that I'm actually like. Okay, you know what? I want to meet you. Like, whereas you're, you're the second. <laughs> he uh, he he does coding and he builds uh, apps and everything. And I'm gonna want to talk about that because I'm gonna. And this is gonna be my first launch coming out soon. But he oh, nice. uh, doing some work with me on on the app end and coding. So you guys, I have to. I love brilliant minds. I love that we come from totally different backgrounds, have totally different life stories, but we can relate. And you know, our energy is right there together. I love that. <laughs> yeah, we both track stars. We both running. <laughs> <laughs> Like, yeah, but learning, see, I'm learning, and then now I'm we go ahead. we have stopped running. We stopped running away from stuff, and we started running towards something, yeah. which is just a huge difference. Which is the thing that I'm attracted to too. I want to find people who know what they're looking for 
And if I can help them get closer to it, then hooray, because I know they're, they're going to help me get closer to where I need to go. Yes, I agree. And I'm um, coming up in on a relationship and I, um, I haven't dated for a while and it's really scary for me. And, you know, I kind of prayed for it and then I kind of met, put, you know, you know, manifested it and meditated on it. Mm-hmm. And now that it's into fruition, I'm like, hold up, wait, is this is what I said I wanted? Like not, not second guessing <laughs> myself, but it's real. It's the real thing now. And it's time to be and do, and it's time to do everything that you said you was going to do. It's time to shine. It's time to show that, you know, you're ready, you're open, and you're willing to yep. commit and make it work. And commitment scares the fuck out of me. I'm just going to say that. And I, and I mentioned it to mm-hmm. him. He knows. Commitment scares me. Like, when I'm really, like I said, when building a friendship or a relationship, and I know that, okay, this is something that I want to last for the long haul, where we're going to be in each other's lives, that kind of scares the shit out of me. So, I mm-hmm. there were some wounds and some things that I had to work out within that. And I've worked it out, but um, I can finally be honest and open and speak, you know, my mind. Because, like I said, when you're getting into a relationship or even a friendship, that's a partnership. That's a team. You know, you guys have to work together. You have to be able to communicate. You have to be able to converse. You have to be able to be open and honest. And I'm learning to be able to be that and do that. Yeah. Yeah, I remember I remember when I felt like that in my relationships because, you know, like we have similar relationship things where um, I'm always arguing and fighting with my partner. We're going through this whole process. And so, you know, when I moved to Chicago, I decided I would make something, I would do something radically different. So that's when I made my transition. So I transitioned from a female to male. So I was male presenting. And then I went, I was having difficulty connecting with women because, you know, I was afraid to talk about my body and it was just hard anyway. So I met this guy. I decided, well, I'm going to do it completely different. I'm going to meet a guy. I'm going to go for one of those. And, um, I I dated him and I remember thinking that I wanted everything to be completely different. I didn't want to fight. I didn't want to argue. I wanted them to have their own money and I didn't want to have any, I didn't have to help them with anything. I wanted to be self-sufficient and all that. And I was like, all right, this guy appears and he seems like a cool person. And I remember the very first time that I had to tell them something that, what I thought was going to cause an argument. And we had a conversation. There was no argument. I wanted to run. I'm telling you, I wanted to run out of there so fast because this was weird. I was like, we're not, we're not going to argue. I was thinking that in my head. We, what do I do? We're going to watch TV after this? What? Everything okay? I don't understand. I don't know what, I don't know what happened. The, the the toxicity you you can't you you can't fathom you can't wrap your head around when you know it's not it's healthy and someone is mm-hmm. right there with you meeting you halfway and allowing you to express yourself giving you the opportunity to say hey okay what's going on like I'm here I'm listening I'm, I'm all eyes I'm all ears what's up it, it, yeah that for me scares me and it makes me really want to run but now I'm like okay hold up like, this is yeah. what I asked for it's time to you know, like I say, a lot of times when you when you pray for patience and peace and whatever you pray for, you know, it'll be presented to you in a way, a situation will arise and then it'll play out and you have to be everything that you pray for. Everything you thought you said you mm-hmm. wanted, are you ready? It's going to be yep. real. So what are you going to do with it? Are you going to run? Are you going to fumble? Are you going to, and, and I'm to the point now, I'm not fumbling anymore, especially when I feel like I have someone great, someone, some people around me that I feel like are great for my soul. You know, and they, I admire them and I, they inspire me because they are who, who they are and they allow me to be me. So, and I'm learning like, you know what, it's, I'm not used to, like you said, things not being toxic. I'm so used, like you said, all yep. fussing and fighting, cussing going on and, you know, losing your cool and like, I'm so chill now. Like, I'm cool yeah. now. Like, since all of this has happened, I'm like, I'm really calm and like, I'm, I'm even giving people at, uh, even in my workspace, I'm allowing them to be themselves and speak their mind freely and not take it in and ready to, oh, I'm ready to fight. Like, okay, you said it wrong. You said some fighting words. Like, I'm allowing them to express the way they feel, good or bad, and that's on you. You have the right to express yourself, and I have the right to not give a damn. I have the right to fall into the trap and argue with you. I have the right to do whatever I choose, but it's the way I react, and I'm learning to, okay, I'm going to let you have that. I ain't re- I'm not giving you a reaction. And my response now mm-hmm. is your reaction is the best reaction, and I'm just going to let you have it. 
Like I, I, I learned the hard way, and and you have to pick and choose your battles. And I'm to the point now, like people even at work, they're like, dang, you know, you cool, like. I ain't think you're yeah. that transparent and you're that you're so evolved and you're open. I have when you get when you learn the tools, the necessary tools to deal with people in this world, that's like the best thing you could ever do because everyone wants to run and hide from somebody. Everyone get that mm-hmm. one person that can get up under their skin and they kinda don't like them and they may ruin their whole damn day, they ready to go home, leave the event. But I'm not <laughs> the event. If you if, if my enemy come in the same room that I'm in, you don't like me, you better stay on your side, I stay on my side, because I'm gonna have a good damn time. We can come together, have a mm. good time, or you can just be on that bullshit and stay over there. I'm over here. It's enough world for all of us to be out here and live the way we wanna live. And I have to give you the right to live your life the way you're gonna live it, and you have to give me the right to do that too. And if not, that's Right. Okay because I'm going to do it anyway, and then like I said, I like to meet <laughs> everybody, get involved, and we have fun together. I don't like falling out with people. I don't like when I see stuff going left. I'm I'm ready to get out of there because I don't really like to come outside of my character and be and say and do things that I don't really you know that I don't yeah, I kind of frown upon. Yeah, don't people. let nobody take your joy. So I'm yeah, that. yeah, I really am. <laughs> Yeah, and that that is definitely the key, and that's why there's so much growth in the experience in your experiences because you're just like, yeah, I know where this leads, I know what this was, and I don't need it anymore. It doesn't serve me, so I'm gonna get rid of that. I'm gonna get rid of this. You got an attitude with me? I know that me bringing an attitude doesn't help me. Right. Doesn't help me at all. Doesn't help me at all. Doesn't help our relationship. Whatever just you, add the fuel I know that. To the fire. Just add the, yeah. to the fire. And make it, you know, make it more. And you try to, you try to diffuse it, and it's just, it's going up in flames. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's the worst it's the worst I, I mean we've had too much experience to to be there and now you know that's where we as coaches can help people learn from our experiences and what i help people do and i believe that you said you help people who um help people be themselves and that's basically all we do i think as coaches is like hey just understanding hey you said you wanted this is this what your actions are doing to reflect that what you want is is running away getting what you want if it is you go ahead you keep on doing that or you just be in denial and say that you this is what you want to do or at least own it Yep. Accountability. Own the fact that you're going to do this. You know yeah, just own it. Just to say you're not shit. Because there's been a lot of times where I was the best that I could be, and I was giving out poor, piss poor effort and mm-hmm. all around. Yep. I just, I really was at the point where I just wasn't really shit, and I had to own up to that and say, you know what, I could do, I could be, I could, I, I can, I knew I could give better, and I know I can give more, and I can put my efforts, and you know, just make light of the efforts, and and um. Heck yeah. Together, yeah. Even with myself. So, yeah, it took a long time for me to accept that I was at that place. You First of all, you have to accept that. And then, like you said, you have to hold yourself accountable in order to come up out of it. Because if you don't accept it, a lot of people are in denial. And they don't want to say they're the yeah. whole problem. So, uh huh. And and then other people, you know, I've got. To, I'm just gonna throw this out here about shame real quick because I'm not a big, I'm not a big fan of shame. I don't think shame is a good thing to to have. I think it's a it's a, like a doorbell or a knock to let you know that hey, there's something wrong here with your values and what your actions are. But I don't think shame is something that people should hang on to because they, they hide behind it. They're like, oh, I feel so shamed. I feel so bad about what I've done. But no, you just take a look and be accountable for your experience for you what you've done. Be accountable and say, hey, I've done this and i recognize the impact that it had on the people around me and then you take that and you decide whether you want to continue doing that or not being ashamed of it and continue to do it and continuing to do it and continue to do it really hurts your connection to other people i mean i'm not going to want to be around you if you just do something that hurts my feelings all the time but you say you feel so bad about it get away from me I agree. Get away from me. Yeah. I feel like people, if you feel, if you're feeling shame though, cause shame is real. If you're feeling it, then there's an opportunity for you to, to look at what you're doing and decide whether you want to continue doing it or not, or just look at the situation, look at you. There's an opportunity to not to just be like, mm, you know, I is, feel so bad. Like you said, you can be shamed of something and you shouldn't, you, you should have no reason to feel shame. And there's sometimes where, right. yes, you should be shamed because you know better. You know yes. better. No one has to tell you to do better. And and I I made a video. I'm gonna just throw this out there real quick. I made a video recently about um you know not really knowing my worth. And I was I'm, I I have a quote and I'm gonna post it later today. And it speaks on. It's really sad how you don't see your worth and someone else can. 
Like, it's really sad. Or you don't see, you know, you you, you can see someone else's worth and they don't see it. And mm-hmm. I didn't see my worth for a long time. Like, I let that, my light damned him down so much where it was only darkness and, and toxic everything around me. And I didn't see it. And it took for someone to be like, you know what? I knew, I know you could do better than this. Like, I, you know, for them expecting me to do better that put fuel to you know that added fuel to my fire that helped me be like damn you know what i can do better like a lot of times when someone can see the best in you man that's all you really need is someone to be yep. able to see that version of you which what you always wanted to be and do it was it was so that really helped me become into more of who i am and and like i said i say it's sad that you know, sometimes it takes someone to see our worth before we can see it, and it is kind of sad. But it is. That, it really did help me, and I hate. I want people to more people to start to see, you know, and, and to know their worth. You know, to know what they they are. Um, you know. Yeah, what with their what they're doing. Yeah. They are, you know. Yeah, and I know <laughs> at the left because I'm thinking about how you're a natural born coach, you're a natural born leader, and you walk it around, and you start seeing these people with these dim lights, and you're like, hey, hey, turn that up, I know you can. Hey, hey, turn that up, get fire, I know you can. I can see it, I can see it, and it has to drive you crazy. It has to drive you crazy not to say something about it. It really does. <laughs> and well, now I'm learning that sometimes because I feel like anyone that I could I meet and I come across on a daily basis. I'm, I'm supposed to meet them for a reason whether they're supposed to show me something within myself that I need to fix or whether I'm there to help them like you said to help you know be shine your light and, and you know pick mm-hmm. yourself up and you don't have to be like and a lot of times I see uh, I see people do a lot of things that I used to do and I'd be like damn is that how I was is that how I acted <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I see that stuff too and I'd be like I'm glad wow I'm no more. Like, I was making a damn fool of myself but I did it <laughs> yeah, I had that. I'm like, yeah. Sometimes when I see those people, when I ha- I hear them ex- their experiences, and I think, yeah, you know, I was there too. You know, I was drinking a whole lot. I was all sad. I was like disconnected. I was lonely. I didn't have I didn't have an emergency contact. I didn't have anything oh, in my yeah. life. I didn't have anybody close to me in my life. And I'm like, yeah, I know. And but I know what you're doing. I know what you're feeling. I know what you're doing. And I, I'm like, yeah, I used to be that way. I used to do those things too. And I'm I just can't. Sometimes I just look back and I'm like, I, I've come so far. <laughs> yeah. I have come so far. And I look at people who, who may be in the situation that I was and I'm thinking, hey, there's something else on the other side. And I made it. So let's go. Let's go. Yes, I love that. Thank you for coming on. We've been on, the, on here for over 40 minutes. But the conversation was so good. I didn't want to stop. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. Are you, you going to help so many listeners out there? You helped me with you know sharing your story and the, your process and realizing that is you know it's it's a, the transition and it's a it's a process and it's not going to happen all overnight but you took the yeah. time and you went through each step each process and it's and, and said, it's an internal process yes it really was and that helped me and especially when it comes to the three ends I ain't gonna ever forget that you know <laughs> what I'm only needs saying, negotiables yeah, and your nevers nevers like i'm i need those three ends do you have something written on this like do you have a like an ebook or a oh well actually i i don't have i have a course i have a course i have a free course you can uh your listeners can find it at patternsofpossibility.com slash more possibility. So it's a free course. It's all about understanding connections. And you go through this course and you just understand more about how you are connected with other people, what you need, basically what you need to help you connect with other people. Because it all starts with you, all into, within. So your needs, negotiables, and your nevers are your needs, negotiables, and your nevers. It's Those it's are your things. Everyone. Yes, because we all have mm-hmm. our own set of what we're gonna put up with and what we're not and you know um just we all have our own different boundaries some people are more open to certain things than others so it just depends on who you are so i love that um i would love to get in with you on somehow i think i can see a whole speaking engagement on that like (laughs) yes i'm working on it i'm working on it (laughs) i would love to be able to be a part of that in some way if you just need me to hang balloons or anything like i like to be a part of <laughs> i'm gonna let you come in and hang balloons and you're gonna be leading the whole thing get out of here with I that <laughs> no, seriously, i know how to step 
back and, and play my role. And just to, oh. it's like, I'm really good at, it's so crazy. I'm really good at helping other people that when it comes to myself, I need an assistant or a manager because it's hard for me to hone in on my own stuff. Like, mm -hmm. I'm so wrapped up in a, I have to remember a lot of times to take time for myself and not spread myself so thin because I can see clearly what someone else needs to do, but it's really hard to focus in on what I need to do and each step that I have to take, especially with this business, my coaching business, the podcast business. So I really, I'm going to be eventually looking for an assistant and, or, and, or a manager, someone that could, uh, you know, help me level up, just help me keep, I just need to have a great, a balance. Like I said, I'm, I'm like I said, when you a coach, you have so many people that you know with issues and problems, and you got solutions. You gotta, I'm, I'm doing one at a time, and it, and it, it does get overwhelming. So how do you, um, how do you balance out that your coaching life, your business life, and then with personal? Yeah, you get somebody else to help you. That's the <laughs> we we need each other for a reason. We right. we co we're coaches. We're coaches for people for a reason. I mean, people just don't get to see. They maybe see too much of their light, and they're just like you know everywhere, and it's shining everywhere, and you need a little bit of focus, or it's too dim, and they're not shining up anything, and they need a little bit of help to get like their light going. You know, we need each other. We need each other for these. You know, I could just go on and on. We we got great chemistry, and I'm sure you will invite me back again. We'll get the speaking speaking engagement or something going because that's in the works for me you know in that like putting something together and I'll, i would love to come after you though because you are when it comes to your storytelling you have a power and i haven't reached that level yet and I'm, it's slowly coming but you tell great stories and you keep it right to the point and you don't and even when you do bear off you come on back and you it was, it was, a, it was a purpose for all of it like i get lost in all the like once i go there i gotta hit i need somebody to hey come on back real quick because you, you know i forget i'm telling the story <laughs> a great you, you i love that your presence i love that you are a great storyteller so most definitely thank you i can see you yeah. a lot of openings and stuff for people like that's your that's your gift <laughs> wow thank you but yeah thank um, you we're gonna um, have to get together again so i have a few more um interviews to publish before this but if this one right here is good i'm gonna make this one all big because i'm gonna have to do a flyer and e-design everything for this one like you can, you can <laughs> get your own new e-design cover when it comes to my my podcast templates like i've been just using one just one podcast template but i want to do something different for you for like, oh well th yeah. oh thank you appreciate that appreciate that yeah it was really great to connect with you and i can't wait to you know talk with you some more yes thank you so much thank you for taking the time to come on here i know i kept you longer than I said that I would, but thanks so much. And much. nobody is mad at it. Nobody here is mad. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I really appreciate you, and I'll talk to you soon. All right. Take care, Stacey. You too. Bye. Bye.